You will have to look up on that screen today uh, for these projectors not working. We need some cleansing also in this temple, in the projectors of this temple. So, A father and his son, a very successful man, wanted to spend some time with his son, and so he went on a hike in the woods with his young son. As they were walking, you know, they got themselves into the woods, and then the river grew, and so they couldn't come back. So they had to look for a place where to spend the night over there. And so looking around, they found this very humble house in the middle of the mountain. And so they went and knocked on the door, and the family received them and let them stay through the night very kindly. So this dad with his son you know, sat at a table, and they shared a supper with them. You know, very simple, just, you know, some milk and cheese and, and something that they had to offer them. So the father, who was a successful man, asked them, you know, who, how do you survive here? How do you do? You're, you know, not close to the towns or anything. And they replied, well, we have a cow. And our cow is really our life because we milk the cow and with that we, we sell uh, some of the milk to our neighbors and we use some for ourselves and we make cheese and cream and things just for, for us. They were struck by that situation and so they spent the night there and when the, ten, the time uh, came to, for them to go, uh, the father looked at the son and said, go and you will find the cow right next to the cliff, push it off the cliff. The son was struck by the, the request, but he wanted to be obedient to his dad, and so he went and did as his, his dad told him. He pushed the cow off the cliff. Now, many years later, uh, the son grew up, and he was in the same woods, in the same trails, and he wanted to go and visit the house with a great remorse in his heart. And so when he turned around and saw the place where that humble hovel was, he, he went uh, to see the place, and he found that there was a mansion, a beautiful house in the place. And so he went to knock and ask for the family and where they were, and the, the son, who was now grown, said, no, we have lived always here. So what happened? How, how did you progress so much? And uh, the son replied, you know, we used to have a cow, and that was our life. But when, one day the cow fell off the cliff, and after that we had to learn new skills to help the fields produce its fruit. And since then, we have grown so much. We have grown in so many ways, and so we are very thankful that we don't have the cow anymore. The best way to get new results in our lives sometimes is by pushing off the cow to the cliff so that we may learn new skills, new results, and we may see new things in our life. Because maybe today we find ourselves like those people in the temple of Jerusalem, saying, we have done things this way always. This is how we've done it always for years, for more than 46 years. I, we, we've done this this way. The news of Jesus today is that if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. I want to make things new, says Jesus. I want to make something new in our life. Behold, I make all things new. I come to do something new in your life. So my question for you this morning is, are you ready for something new to happen in your life? Something that most likely at first is going to be uncomfortable, will make us defensive, and will make us insecure. But the Lord will make something new. So we, may we let the Lord make something new in our lives in this Lenten season. So I want to share with you three steps in this morning to building a new temple in our lives. So what is a temple? A temple is a building that gives glory to God. Jesus on this Sunday wants to build a new temple, a new life that will give glory to him with us. He entered the temple of Jerusalem in the gospel that we read today. 
which all the prophets, the prophets had announced that the Messiah would purify. One of the big tasks of the Messiah was to purify the temple of Jerusalem. And so Jesus comes into the temple and he doesn't come with the same responses of all the prophets before him. He comes with something new. He doesn't even do what he's done for the last 30 years because Jesus has gone up to the temple as a good Jew every year of his life with his family. But today he comes to do something new. He comes to purify the temple, to rebuild the temple. He even showed with his own life as the son of God that he could rebuild the temple of his body in three days into something new and fresh. Christ wants to make something new in our lives. And let me tell you, this is the purpose of conversion. Conversion is not just bettering ourselves. Conversion is not just, you know, ourselves a little better, you know, with a little progress in our lives. Conversion is about dying. Conversion is about dying to the old self. Conversion is about pushing the cow off the cliff. Conversion is about letting the temple fall in our lives. Letting the temple fall so that Christ may build a new temple to his glory. So what are the three steps that we can follow in order to build our lives afresh, anew, in some aspects at least, a new temple for the glory of God? We could summarize them in three words. To clean up, to build up, and to hold up. And I'd like to touch on those briefly in this morning. So the first one is to clean up the temple. For the first step, we need to be willing to push the cow off the cliff. Lent, if anything else, is a time of brightness, of being able to see things as they are. Because when you stir things up, you know, they start coming to the surface, the things that need to be changed in our lives. You know, many times I, I think for myself, why do I fast? If when I fast, I am, you know, impatient, I get hungry, uh, I'm not in a good mood, why do I fast? It's precisely because of that. So that those things may come to the surface. That those things I may be able to see. Because many times in our lives, we get used to those things and we compromise. And we coexist with things that shouldn't be there truly. As the people in the temple of Jerusalem did. And so the time of Lent, when you start fighting the good fight, those things that need conversion start coming up to the surface. I share with you, one of the things I gave up for Lent is music. Now, I don't listen to a you know, great deal of music, but sometimes when I go for a run or when I am working on something that doesn't need a lot of concentration, I do listen to some you know, classical music or Christian music, depending on what I want in that moment. But I have realized in this time of Lent how dependent I am on that and how much I, I seek noise in my life and I don't like that silence and reflection. And so that has come to the surface only because I gave up music. And so I realized how attached I was to that. And so maybe if you did give up something in this Lent, you're already realizing how attached you were to that. Because we all are. And it's good that those things come to the surface now so that we are able to see what needs to be cleansed in our temple. So I ask you in this morning, what habit are you willing to stop today? Let the temple fall. But the second step is to build up, not just to clean up, but also to build up. To build up a new foundation. We need to build up upon a new foundation in our lives. For new habits, we need new foundations. A building can never be bigger than its own foundations, or it will collapse. So we need a foundation that is unmovable, unchangeable, solid, and that foundation is Christ. So build a new, upon a new foundation in your new life. So as I told you, giving up music, and I, this is almost a confession, I experienced my failings so many times in this land already. 
But now I committed, I realized that I couldn't just give that up because it was being painful. So I committed now to one hour of silence every evening. So they start, you know, go uh, packed morning and, and afternoon. And then before I start the evening, that with the Newman Center, we have many activities in the evening. Before that, I have this hour of just silence. When I go into the chapel, pray the liturgy, do some adoration, and I'm just in silence with the Lord. And it's been so beneficial. I haven't been so faithful, to be honest, but I tried. You know, sometimes it's shortened to 40, 30, or 15 minutes even. But try it. Hmm? Try a new foundation, a new solid foundation that will give you uh, a new temple to the glory of God. And the last one is to hold up, to hold up to our resolutions, to stay strong through the pressures. Because, and especially in the beginning, when we start doing something good, when we start changing something in our lives, there will be a great deal of pressure to go back to our old ways, to go back to things as we have always done them before. You know, St. Augustine, when he had to describe his conversion, he said, I felt that the temptations of my old self were pulling my garments back and asking me, are you going to leave us now? Are you going to leave us forever? And so maybe we experience that same temptation. I could experience that noise in my life saying, are you going to leave me now? Is this forever? Are you sure? And so we are tempted to give in and to go back to our old ways. So stay steadfast. Hold up to your resolutions and you shall see the glory of God. Let me briefly share a testimony with you of a man who did undergo an, an amazing conversion, but he had to fight through, uh, you know, especially at the beginning, through many barriers in order to, to gain that conversion and build a new temple in his life. And this is really a small print I recognize, so if you can follow, that's okay. If not, you just listen. He says, As I entered my parents' house today, three years later, my mom said to me, how good you are doing, my son. It was more like a whisper, as if a thought slipped through her lips. Then it hit me. It worked. The best decision I've made in my whole life was to start praying and let myself be guided. Doing Alpha worked. The retreats worked. Adoration worked. The Eucharist worked. The Mass worked. It worked to pray the Rosary. It worked to go on, pil on a pilgrimage. It worked to go to confession. Your advice worked. And even though I am still battling every day, I feel renewed in my faith. And I feel like I was born again by coming to know Jesus, his Father, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful testimony of someone who had to fight through many pressures, many things that were pulling him back to his old ways, but he decided to hold up to his resolutions, and he did see the glory of God in his life. So I want to invite you today that we may build with our lives a new temple to the glory of God. Maybe this can't be in this land for our whole lives, you know, a brand new life completely today, but maybe one area in our lives that we can clean up, that we can build up, that may bring us to hold up to our resolutions. Practically, I propose to you two things, one external and one internal. The external is to actually clean up a section of the house. Choose a, a section at home, and in this week, clean it up. Think of you know, the five senses, that it may smell good, look good, you know, that you can uh, enter into that place and say how beautiful it is that that external place may be a reminder of what our souls need to be. So I invite you in the first place, and I will do it myself, uh, to clean up an area in the house that will remind us of our, of our souls. And in the second place, to make a spiritual resolution of something that we can clean up, that we have to die to, that we have to stop doing, so that we can build up a new foundation in our lives and also we may hold up when the pressure to give in comes. And honestly, I share with you, I am 
far from being perfect and I don't put myself in a pedestal. In this Lenten season, I failed already many times, many times. But I am willing to commit again on this Sunday with all of you who want to commit as well to clean up the temple again, to build up something new. And I'm wanting to commit today to also hold up in those moments of pressure so that we may be a temple to the glory of God.